when you first get your bee, it will say that it's 100% ready to fly. Well, it's not. And it will state that every bee is test flown before packaging, and it hasn't. Which is why someone had a flyer whose tail rotor was wired the wrong way round, and so the tail rotor was working in reverse. So we're just going to go through some basic checks and set up so that we can get the bee ready for his first flights. Now your bee will come with one or two different types of battery. It will either be an MI, MH or nickel metal hydride or it will be a lipo battery. Now if it's a NIMH then it doesn't need charging because those batteries need to be run down before they're charged. So there will probably be enough charge in there to do the setups that we need to be doing. If you've got a lipo battery then put it on charge now because these batteries don't have to be run down before you charge them up, it won't do any harm to the battery. Um, just plug it into your charger and you'll get a flashing green light and when that light goes solid green then it's charged up. And if you charge up the battery from a previous flight it will take about an hour and a half to charge up. I use a a plug-in timer set for two hours because it doesn't matter if you slightly overcharge it. The only thing you have to be really careful with the, a lipo battery when charging is they have been known to explode and cause fires so never leave a, a charging lipo unattended and when you're flying with a lipo always stop flying at the first signs of the battery getting low because if you over discharge your battery with this lipo then you'll ruin it. So if you stick your battery on charge, then while it's charging, we'll go through the setups and checks. Next thing we want to do is just go over all the screws, um, except these ones here on the paddles. You can leave these because we're going to be adjusting these paddles later on. But basically, all the other screws along with the servos check the tail, the tail motor mounts are tight make sure on the back here if you can see you've got a grommet here make sure that's on tight so the the tail's on secure underneath check the main gear here everything's all tight um, just basically and, and underneath here as well you've got screws here for the motor make sure they're tight make sure things nice and secure. Also you want to check the plugs on the 4-in-1. These two plugs here you want to make sure it's red at the top, black at the bottom and the bottom one you want black at the top, red at the bottom. Uh, this is the 4-in-1. It's 4-in-1 because it's a speed controller, a gyro and receiver. So speed controller for the towel motor and also the main motor, the receiver, and the two servos. So make sure those wires are the right way around. The other thing you want to do is because on here, these two lugs here can catch on the canopy. So what you can do is, I've just made two little cutouts around here. So it just gives a little bit more clearance, because if they fail during flight, then you're heading for disaster. So just make little cutouts there, and then that'll give you more clearance. Um, the other thing, you've got two screws under here, which are for your blades. Now, there's a difference of opinion as to how tight they should be. But basically, from what I've been told, I have my blades so that it's tight enough that when you turn the blades it turns the motor without them slipping. At the same time I can move them nice and freely. So adjust them underneath if need be to get the tension right on there. Another thing you can do is just check the distance for the flybar weights and here make sure they're the same distance apart 
Um, the next thing to do then will be take the blades off and balance them because if they're not balanced then you're going to get vibration and that's going to make the heli unstable. So to do that you've got two ring likes, one here on either side. So just with your finger now you can pull these off like so and then underneath just clips onto two little ball bearings so try not to put too much stress under here where all the links are on the servos but just gently prise these off there's one two so now we've got the blades off and the next thing we're going to do is balance them now with the blades off Firstly, you want to get them through in line with the head here, as best you can. Then I've just got two wine glasses, and all you've got to do is balance the rim of the glasses on these two balls here. And you place it on here. And see how level they are. What you want to do is, it's a bit awkward out here because it's a bit windy, but basically determine which is the higher blade and then I use electrical tape just underneath here. Now you don't want to use white tape because on this side you've got this white tape which is for the tracking which we'll be doing later. So if you put white tape under here it's going to confuse you when it comes to tracking so I use black tape probably won't need a lot, just put some little strip on this, it's a bit trial and error until you get it right. If you put too much on, don't add tape to the other side, obviously just take off some of the tape you put on. When they're level, you can connect it back up to the head and then we can move on to the next step. Now to put the head back on, I use long nose pliers. So basically you can line it up with the two ball bearings on the top and just click down on one side, then on the other. I just wet the balls with my finger, just wet them, and then you can put the ring lights back on. That's the rotors back on the body again.